All right, hey, I'm back, and uh, well, anyway, here's what happened. I went on a painting marathon and um, did a little bit more experimenting and got some news for you here. So anyway, remember I was talking about sealing the non-textured parts of the armor? Well, and I pointed out this uh, this stuff right here uh, seemed, to be, seemed to be a decent option. And actually, it turns out it works pretty well. Uh, at least for the back side of the foam, this this side right here. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the edges here in a minute. Uh, so anyway, and uh, anyway, what I did was just painted that stuff on, let it let it dry, put a second coat on, uh, let that dry. Then I buffed it very lightly with some fine sandpaper. And actually, I, when I was rooting around looking for some, I actually found this little sanding pad that I have. And I think this is maybe like 300 grit or something like that. Uh, definitely, definitely not 220. But anyway, what I did was I buffed the uh, buffed the final coat of the acrylic with the sanding pad. Uh, then you need to wipe that down very well so you get all the sanding dust off. Then I put a coat of uh, put a coat of paint on there. And let's see, let's see if I can show you here. There we go. Uh, got a little bit of gloss coming off of that. Now what I did here is I put a coat of paint on and then after it thoroughly cured, I put another, uh, excuse me, after it thoroughly cured, I buffed it with this and you can see the evidence there. And then uh, I wiped off all the sanding dust and that gave me a very, very smooth finish. And at this point, all this needs, I believe, is a very light coat of the black and uh, this piece will be ready to um, to uh, shape. Uh, unfortunately, my original um, shield generator box, I was uh, uh, I was working on it and I had a knife slip. Don't worry, I'm fine. On the other hand, the shield generator box was not had to cut a new piece. So uh, anyway, what I'm going to end up doing here is uh, on Saturday, I'm going to go out. I'm going to cut. Again, another groove right here. Get that get that sharp bend in it. Uh, hopefully, that's not going to tear the paint up. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off painting it until I've done that. So uh, that's that. Uh, so anyway, uh, going to the edges here. The uh, the edges, at least the bottom, uh, these edges on the uh, shield box don't need to be sealed because they're actually going to be glued down to the back piece. So that's working out pretty well. The front edge right here. Looks like it could use another coat of paint. Uh, and same thing though, uh, like I said, I I sealed it uh, with a couple coats of the, of the uh, acrylic and it does okay. Uh, nothing really works too well on the edges. And again, uh, here's another, another look at it. Sorry about the lighting, but Again, it's nighttime under fluorescent light. But uh, anyway, I found that if you put multiple coats on, those multiple coats kind of have the effect of sealing, sealing in around it anyway. So there you go. That's how that looks. Uh, that's that's what I'm going to work with now from, I think, from now on for any, uh, uh, at least any of the untextured areas. Again, the textured areas, they take the paint pretty well. Although, as you can see here from this white painting that I've done, the... Uh, uh, the white just doesn't quite cover as well as, as the black paint, at least not going over a, a, a darker uh, underlayment. So this is going to definitely need a second coat. I'm going to work on that here in just a few minutes. So that's how that looks. And as you can see, what I've done was I've taped this off. I just went ahead and used the entire, painted the entire top of this shoulder piece white. <clears throat> and then taped off the other side and worked from there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the white paint as, uh, I guess I guess the best way to describe it would be a primer, primer layer for the uh, red paint that I'm gonna use. Now, uh, the shield generator backs, as you see here, uh, yeah, I'm gonna smooth those out here in, in a few minutes as well. Uh, I, I probably won't do any, uh, any more painting on those until I get the uh, until I get the shield generator box bent into place, so that's going to work. Uh, now again, here's the white on the hand pieces. Definitely needs another coat. White on the uh, well, the forearm doohickey. Definitely going to need another coat. Maybe probably two. Now, real quick, the brushes that you use will make a difference. These brushes, like this, these little hobby brushes, work very, very well on these smooth surfaces. They're about the width of the edge of the foam, so it's easy to get a nice 
nice, nice steady, uh, or excuse me, a nice uh, even paint line on there, but they work really, really poorly on this textured area. Now these chip brushes right here, they work really, really well on the texture area because they, uh, they, they're actually uh, pretty good at, at uh, working the paint into the, into the texture. But as you can see here, they just don't do that well uh, if you're trying to do any kind of fine detail work. So uh, with that, I think that's going to be about it. Uh, oh, one other thing to watch out for when you're working with these brushes here. Uh, unless you get, unless you pay the money and buy some expensive brushes, uh, you know, I'm talking, you know, $4, $4 $5 more each. Um, the, the ones that you're going to actually take the time to re clean and reuse. Watch out for shedding. Uh, I ended up having to uh, to go along go along behind this one of these brushes and just clean up tons of little hairs that came out of it. Even though I tried to clean it before I even started, uh, these things just shed like crazy. Uh, the chip brushes, eh, not too bad, but they can they can leave some hairs behind. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for tonight, and uh, I'm going to get a, get a little work done on the painting and. When you next see these things, we might have a nice red stripe down the middle of them. We'll see. Bye.